Well, hello everyone, I'm Dr. David Perlmutter. We've known that fructose is a real powerful threat to our metabolic health for a long time. In fact, the first study appeared that related to uh, fructose being a threat to our metabolism back in 1970 in the journal The Lancet. We really haven't fully understood the mechanisms whereby fructose threatens our metabolic health until much more recently. But I think it's really quite instructive to look at the mechanism whereby fructose is threatening to our health, especially as it amplifies uric acid, through the lens of the notion that fructose actually offered us some very powerful advantages related to our survival in our ancestry. So I'd like to look at fructose through the lens of how it uh, relates to our survival, and then see and explore how changes in our current environment uh, have affected the outcome, how it affects things like our metabolism. We know that, uh, as described, consuming fructose is a survival mechanism. It certainly was a survival me mechanism for uh, our ancestors. You know, 99% of the time that we've been on this planet, Consuming fructose has allowed us to survive through increasing our deposition of fat, allowing us to have a resource, for example, for water to protect us against dehydration. And this is the consumption of fructose. This is the consumption of fruit uh, that our ancestors would seek to do, even primate ancestors. But I think really very important to recognize that beyond consuming fructose, that our bodies actually can make fructose again as a survival mechanism. And I'd like to focus on that, uh, the ability that we have to actually manufacture fructose from a precursor, which is glucose or blood sugar, if you will. Uh, this um, reaction, going from glucose to uh, sorbitol and then to fructose, uh, the enzyme is aldose reductase, for any of you who are interested in that kind of stuff, and then sorbitol hydroxylase, another enzyme. But be that as it may, this is the so-called polyol of a pathway. Basically, the important part here is that even when we're not consuming fructose, there are certain things that we can do to actually amplify fructose production within our bodies, even though we are on a restricted diet as it relates to consuming fructose. So let's look at some of those factors. First of all, elevated serum sodium. How do we get uh, elevation of our salt in our body? Well, that's the, the signal for that is when we're dehydrated. So when we're dehydrated, our bodies do not have enough water, our sodium will go up, and that's a signal for our bodies to make more fructose. We can actually trigger that simply by consuming salt. So eating a lot of salt without actually consuming a lot of water will raise our serum sodium and that will help speed this reaction along and raise our body's fructose production uh, from blood sugar. Uh, this is the same mechanism that's involved with respect to uh, creating uh, more fructose when our blood pressure is low. And as you might expect, if our blood sugar, if our glucose is higher, then it might force this reaction right along and it does. Now, the, the warning signal that amplifies this entire pathway is elevation of uric acid. That's why this uric acid becomes such an important concept because elevation of uric acid tends to cause this reaction to even go further along and uh, facilitates the production of even more fructose. Fructose is then metabolized into uric acid. This is what we call a feed forward process. When we are hypoxic, when our bodies do not have enough oxygen, it causes us to produce more fructose, which then tends to reduce uh, oxygen utilization by the energy producers within our cells called the mitochondria. So these are some of the important things that happen as a consequence of when our fructose uh, is uh, increased and what can actually cause this reaction to move forward. Let's first look at this notion of the elevated uh, serum sodium. That is how our bodies sense uh, dehydration. That causes this reaction to move forward, increasing fructose production and all the downstream effects of fructose production, which are amplified by uric acid, including increasing our blood sugar.
increasing inflammation, increasing the damaging effects of chemicals called free radicals, increasing the production of fat within our bodies. Let's take a closer look at this elevated serum sodium. We see that serum sodium is in fact elevated in uh, individuals who are diabetic or even insulin resistant. We see elevated serum sodium, we all know this, correlated with hypertension or high blood pressure. But we also see elevation of serum sodium in obesity, both in adults as well as in children, and really across the spectrum in children and adults of metabolic syndrome, we see elevation of serum sodium. So again, serum sodium uh, moves this reaction along. So we're making again more fructose out of glucose. And what does that ultimately do? How does it connect? And what is this connection? Why is it so important? It's because when we produce fructose, what's the upside? The upside, why it relates to being, for example, dehydrated. The upside is it causes the creation of fat. Now that's going to take a little bit of unraveling. Why would we want to create fat when we are dehydrated? And to get the answer to that question, we are going to turn to our friend, Mr. Camel. Now, why does a camel have a hump? Uh, and it relates to the fact that the camel is able to walk across the desert and not require much water. What is inside the hump? Let's take a close look at the camel's hump. Deep inside, what do we find? It's not filled with water. It's not a water reservoir. It's full of fat. And why that's important is because when fat is metabolized, it forms two things, carbon dioxide and water. So in a very real sense, the camel's hump being full of fat is a resource from which that camel can make water. This is the reason that our bodies are triggered to make fat when we are dehydrated or when our bodies think they are dehydrated when we consume a lot of salt. High sodium, make more fructose, make more fat. It's a resource for water. And certainly uh, it's not just the camel, but really any animals that have a lot of fat use that fat uh, as a resource for making fresh water. Whales have a lot of fat. Yes, they use that fat for energy, but also to make uh, free water. Uh, this is some drone video that I shot in Alaska. Uh, of a, a whale, humpback whale in this case, but consider that even the hummingbird, uh, at times when it's getting ready for these epic you know, journeys of several thousand miles, up to 40% of the hummingbird's body weight can be fat. And what is it, What do you, if you want a hummingbird in your backyard, you put out sucrose, you put out sugar, 50% fructose, so that hummingbird can make fat, have energy, but also make water, make and have water for its long journey. So let's look then at how glucose could push this along. We would expect that just looking uh, at this, uh, how this all works, higher glucose on the left, more fructose on the right. It explains then the production, the increased production of fructose in diabetics who have high blood sugar. It explains to some degree their weight gain, their excess body fat, their risk for hypertension, their risk for cardiovascular disease because of the increase in fructose production. And as mentioned, this elevation of uh, uric acid pushes this whole thing along. The uric acid tends to increase the metabolism of fructose, speeds this reaction, but also the metabolism of fructose by amplifying the action of an enzyme that helps with the metabolism of fructose called fructose kinase. Interestingly, hypoxia or low oxygen also stimulates uh, this activity. Where do we see hypoxia? We see it in people with sleep apnea. Sleep apnea, I mean, when people stop uh, breathing when they are sleeping, is a significant risk factor for what? For diabetes, for uh, obesity, for diseases related uh, to inflammation like coronary artery disease and even Alzheimer's disease all through this mechanism. So making fructose was a survival mechanism, but now we know in our modern world when uh, when we've got enough food, for example, and we're not suffering from dehydration, uh, is something that we don't necessarily want to amplify. And what does amplify all of this activity is the way fructose then is metabolized into uric acid. 
And why that becomes an issue for us is because of all the things that uric acid does. Uric acid does these things like increases inflammation formerly uh, as a way to protect us. Our bodies being more inflamed uh, in our hunter-gatherer days or even in our primate ancestry, more inflammation would translate to better ability to combat various types of infection. Raising our blood pressure was a survival mechanism uh, because it would help us not get dehydrated and, and suffer, increasing our glucose when we couldn't find food to power our brains so that we could be clever enough uh, to figure out a way to find food and to keep from being eaten by other animals, increasing fat production so that we could have a resource for energy. And as I just showed you, have a resource uh, from which we could uh, make water as well and to preserve that fat as well. In other words, reducing the burning, the utilization, the metabolism of body fat. All of these things are brought about by higher levels of uric acid. And the big driver of this entire activity is, of course, fructose. We know that these days, uh, this activity uh, is brought about by our higher levels of salt consumption and certainly consumption of alcohol and uh, foods that are high in purines as well. Those are derivatives of DNA and RNA found high in certain foods. But by and large, the major driver of this activity these days is our incredible consumption of fructose, that specific sugar that is metabolized into uric acid whose downstream effects include everything that you see listed on the screen. And these are things that today don't really offer us a survival advantage. So again, Fructose was a very powerful uh, resource for us to survive during our times of food scarcity, in our primate history, and certainly in our hunter-gatherer history. But these days, with the abundance of fructose, and as I mentioned, salt as well, uh, what we see playing out is a profound threat to our metabolic health. Thank you for joining me. I'm Dr. David Perlmutter. These are the concepts that we present uh, in my new book, Drop Acid, uh, The Surprising New Science of Uric Acid, The Key to Losing Weight, Controlling Blood Sugar, and Achieving Extraordinary Health. That will be published February 15, 2022. And the URL to learn more about this book is dropacidbook.com.